The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a nice sunny day here in Toronto, so that's uh, a suits our topic. Um, I have Tom Ferris from Alliance who's going to do an introduction and then it, uh, he's going to hand it over to Robert with Solis. Over to you Tom. Thank you very much Lisa. Hello everybody. Thank you for coming on today. Uh, it is a beautiful day here in New Jersey as well uh, and I'm sure it's the same way in Florida for Robert. I think Robert's located in southern Florida. Again, thanks everybody for coming on. Uh, so just a couple of issues uh, up front that I want to address will be about uh, 60 minutes. Um, when everybody signed up, uh, we had a bunch of very good questions that were added into the pre-registration form, and we're going to be addressing those uh, towards the end of the presentation. If there's any questions you have while we're speaking, please use your chat feature, and uh, Lisa is going to read questions out as well throughout the, uh, the presentations, and we'll be addressing those as we go along. Um, just a few minutes on uh, the relationship between um, Alliance Communications and Solus uh, Alliance is a uh, wireless and wireline distributor. We've been in a relationship, a direct relationship with Solus now for several years. Um, we've had the opportunity to work on a lot of very interesting products, literally in both North and South Hemisphere uh, here in, in the Americas. Um, I've known Robert for quite a many years. Solus is a uh, very responsive and innovative company. Uh, as a salesperson, I can say they're very quick on the turnaround times on terms of their, uh, their uh, engineering, their quoting, and also their deliveries. So um, we've had a very good relationship to date, and we're looking to expand that. We've got a lot of different people on the call today from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different vertical markets, both end users, integrators, engineering companies. Um, so we'll try to be as broad stroke as possible, and again, ask as many specific questions as you like. All right? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes on Alliance. We, like I said earlier, we are a master distributor of a variety of different telecommunication products. We started out in the wireless business uh, about 20 years ago, and since then we've added a lot of different other lines that are complementary, not only to the wireless side, but also the wireline side of the business. And these are just a couple of solutions that we provide today. Um, we provide a variety of different microwave backhaul products, infrastructure products, which is basically anything you would hang on a rooftop or a tower. Uh, the IDAS or ODAS market is a very hot market these days for the cellular uh, for the cellular community, and we provide a variety of materials in that uh, in that market as well. And on the fiber optic side of our business, uh, we both do fin finished assembly of specialty uh, fiber optic cables, as well as bulk sale of those cables. So we can help you with any of these products or any other telecommunication related products. Please feel free to call us. And again, we're also supply chain experts. We do a lot of business with cellular contractors and large utilities for uh, large area as well as location rollout of telecommunication products. So uh, again, uh, please ask us, if, uh, call us up after the, the conference if you have any of these types of requirements. Uh, as I said earlier, we have a world-class product assortment in a lot of different categories. We have direct relationships with most of these manufacturers, and we stock a lot of products and warehouses throughout the Americas. One of the things you won't find on our Alliance website is a, mark, is a shopping basket. Uh, fortunately, you have to talk to us, and I think what you'll find when you talk to us is we're all very experienced in a variety of different areas in the telecom industry. We like to get to know customers. We like to become partners with you. Um, we become intimate with you, we try to anticipate your requirements, and we try to bring innovative products to your attention. So we're not just sitting back here answering phones and doing quotes. We become part of the organizations that we partner with, and we look forward to hopefully being uh, providing that services to you. We also provide a lot of pre- and post-sales technical support, including microwave path analysis and path planning, uh, FCC and Industry Canada licensing services, as well as a variety of other design services. And as I said earlier, we have warehouses located throughout the United States, Canada, and through Mexico and Latin America. On the technical service side, again, as I said earlier, we provide a variety of different services, some I already mentioned. We also do pre-configuration of all the electronics that we ship. We do site kitting here as well, and we provide a variety of services around towers. And we also do some pre- and post-sales support and RMA support for a lot of our manufacturers. 
I want to thank you. I'm pretty much done right now. I'm looking forward to turning it over to, uh, to Robert. Here's just some contact information where you can find Alliance on the web and through ver various uh, social media outlets. I'll be coming back on board at the end to, to wrap things up today. And again, we encourage uh, questions, so please use your chat feature and let us know how we can help you. Thank you. Robert? All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Reynolds. I'm with Solus Energy. Uh, Solus Energy is a manufacturer of solar generators and outdoor battery backup systems for wireless radios, surveillance cameras, and remote monitoring. Uh, we provide simple and economical solutions for two real-world problems, the unavailability of power and the unreliability of the power grid. Uh, our products are optimized for low-power applications. Um, we're headquartered outside of Orlando, Florida, and in been in operation since 2005. Our products are used in a number of industry applications, such as security, telecommunications, uh, within telecommunications, both wireless backhaul, mesh, um, small and microcell, as well as fiber to the premise applications, and smart grid, both electric and water, transportation, all levels of government, and in industrial automation, remote monitoring. Uh, and that includes SCADA and telemetry type applications. In fact, this picture shows one of our systems in an environmental remediation uh, project. With the emergence of low-cost, low-power radios, LED lighting, and other energy-efficient devices, it has generated a flood of new applications. Low-power radios are being used to build public safety networks, Wi-Fi hot zones and microcells, surveillance and monitoring systems, as well as numerous agricultural, light commercial, and transportation applications. For example, in public safety, radios are being used to send video back from surveillance cameras, as well as power the emergency communications equipment. Also, the federal government has mandated and funded a, uh, that all railroad crossings have signals, and that the railroad has the ability to remotely stop a train in case of an emergency. Um, in telecommunications, wireless broadband is being deployed all across uh, the Americas, actually across the world. Uh, additionally, the next generation of LTE cell phone sites with small radios that can easily be attached to the outside of a building or to a light pole. Uh, perimeter security, perimeter monitoring, and remote lighting. Uh, in fact, substation perimeter security is a very uh, hot topic right now. Uh, in, in agricultural, uh, automatic pump controls for livestock, water troughs. In each of these cases, Either the power is not there, as in railroad crossings, it is the wrong power, as in substations, or it cannot tolerate brief dips or outages, as in cell phone sites, public safety, or the smart grid. We have a whole suite of products that are specifically designed for low power applications. If no AC power is available, we have our solar generators. If AC power is available and brownout blackout protection is needed, we have our outdoor UPSs or battery backup systems. The third is our continuous power bridge. Many street light and parking lot lights do not have power during the day, and the continuous power bridge powers a camera radio attached to a street light during the day, uh, and then at night when the power comes back to the street light, it recharges the battery, so it's geared for that cyclical type of uh, application versus a traditional UPS which is expecting power 99% uh, of the time. Additionally, we manufacture component parts to support our systems. These include our light pole power tap, which pulls AC power from a street light. Uh, we manufacture our ruggedized enclosures, our side of pole mounts for mounting the solar panels, and our power control interface, which is a turnkey charge controller which, uh, with integrated breakers in it. We also have add-on components like our system monitor, which it alerts via email or SNMP if systems are operating outside of normal conditions. Uh, we have low voltage disconnect, um, which protects the battery when the uh, uh, charge is too low on it. We also manufacture our DC to DC converters and, and PoE injectors. This an example of one of our solar power plants. Solar power plants are a cost effective solution where conventional power does not exist. Uh, they're designed to provide continuous power even under uh, harsh conditions. They're, they're very reliable. Uh, we use quality components to assure long life and continuous power delivery over a wide range of temperature and climate conditions. 
and they're simple to install. They're pre-wired and designed for fast, easy installation. Typically, a system can be installed uh, within an hour or two. Additionally, the systems can all be configured with a variety of power options, such as 12 volt, 24 volt, uh, 48 volt PoE, or any combination of the above. Uh, we also have multiple mounting options, such as pole mount, ground mount, or wall mounting. Uh, one thing to consider uh, with a solar power plant uh, is unlike grid-tied solar solutions, our solar power plants is a capital expense savings, not an operating expense not necessarily an operating expense savings. It's a one-time cost savings over trenching or to having the electric utility extend uh, power out to a remote site. We have numerous pre-designed solutions to meet many applications. These are some of our most uh, common systems. And we can also customize a solution for your specific needs. We also have uh, many systems pre-designed for various rate radio manufacturers or uh, application specific configuration. Um, and this kind of shows you from a single panel up to a two panel, and we can go significantly larger uh, than that, especially as the farther north you go, the larger the system tends to, tends to be. Solar Energy manufactures a suite of ruggedized battery and electronic enclosures. Uh, these are designed for long-lasting outdoor use, even in extreme temperature variations. Um, because they have a, a rugged and robust design for outdoor applications, uh, they're suitable for numerous applications beyond just solar. Some of the features are they're made of, of heavy-gauge aluminum, so they're lightweight yet strong. And unlike steel, uh, they won't have rust stains after a few months in the, in the weather. Uh, they have stainless steel hardware for strength, durability, and security. Uh, all are white powder coated for reflecting heat, as well as vents for convection cooling. Uh, we have pole, wall, or pedestal mounted solutions designed for simple and quick mounting, all designed for an easy install. In the, in the top left-hand corner is our SEC, which is a, a low-cost, lightweight enclosure. Uh, the next one over, the, the uh, E enclosure, SCE, is an economy enclosure with the full features of some of our larger enclosures, uh, although it does not have a shelf. Uh, and it's one of our more popular enclosures. Uh, below that, our SE7 is perfect for small telecom or uh, applications. It's got an integrated 19-inch rack uh, built into the system. And I'll show a couple of pictures uh, further on of, of this unit actually in the, in the field. We also fabricate uh, a full suite of pole mounts for our solar panels. Uh, we can support panels from a single 5-watt panel uh, up to 450-watt panels or two 300-watt uh, panels at a side of pole mount. Uh, we also have uh, ground mounting options uh, when you're adding when systems are much larger than that for uh, greater than uh, a four-panel array. When there's a requirement to put solar into an existing cabinet, Solar Energy makes a turnkey charge controller with breakers for fast, easy installation. Once again, these are built for industrial applications, so they're not going to just have supplemental protection, as many other systems might have, or worse, not using any protection. We also have the PCI uh, Plus version, which includes um, an LED monitor that shows the state of charge of the battery and whether or not PV panel is generating power. And we're showing in the picture here the PCI Plus uh, system. Our LPT, is a, or light pole power tap, I should say, is easily installed between a photo cell and the street light to pull AC power from the light. And typically, a, an electrician is not required for this. Although this is not solar related, you might find numerous uses for the LPT product line. Um, essentially, it's a vampire tap that acts just like an extension cord and allows you to access the power from a light pole to run your equipment. Uh, they're available in. Um, in multiple styles, the LPT-130, which comes as shown here, comes with, uh, terminated with a three-prong connector. Uh, we have our LPT-131, which comes with a 12-foot unterminated cord, which gives you the capability to hardwire uh, the, uh, directly into your um, uh, product or your, your load, whether it's a radio or a camera. We also have uh, our 135, uh, which comes with uh, industrial connector on the end. Um, or 
such as like an M18 connector. Uh, we have the 135R, which is specifically designed for uh, powering ruckus radios. Um, it's, a, it's a special connection that they have. The LPT-130 is most commonly used for temporary installations. Um, and the LPT-131 is for permanent installations because it's hardwired in. Law enforcement agencies and municipalities uh, use these for temporary surveillance in high crime areas or for putting in surveillance cameras uh, in advance of uh, an event that they want to monitor. Robert, I'm show you, uh, sorry, Robert, it's Lisa. Can I interrupt for one second? Sure. Sorry, there was a question, and it's kind of relevant to what you've been talking about. So I just wanted to uh, ask: uh, the question is, what voltage input can the continuous power bridge take? On the continuous power bridge, the um, the base unit uh, is 120. 240, and then we have optional inputs that can do 277, um, 480, or we essentially put a transformer in, in front um, so we can support anything from uh, 120 up to um, uh, uh, 480. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. That's fine. Uh, going back, I'm just going to show you a couple uh, customer examples of some of our products installed in the field. Uh, the first um, picture here is a SCADA deployment, which is one of our solar systems. Uh, this system controls and monitors the water flow uh, from the utility to one of the uh, Disney area golf resorts. Uh, information is sent back to a centralized monitoring location at the uh, utility's headquarters, and the solar power plant is mon is powering water flow meters, uh, pressure meter, and, and the communications radio. So a little hard to see the, the radio up on top of that pole up there. Uh, the second example is a smart grid AMI application. Uh, Oklahoma Gas and Electric deployed uh, hundreds of, of Motorola radios to aggregate their signals sent from their smart meters. Our outdoor UPSs are providing brownout blackout protection for these radios. Uh, you can see the UPS uh, is mounted actually on the pole. Uh, it's a square box near the um, near the bottom there. Uh, in transportation, it may seem a little odd to use Home Depot as an example for transportation. However, uh, in this setup, Home Depot is using one of our solar power plants to power not only surveillance, but also an RFID reader to track shipments entering and exiting their yards. They put on this uh, 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 masting system because they actually move the system around the, the yard uh, depending on uh, the requirements, so it's not in a permanent uh, configuration. Lowe's also uses our solar power plants to power an alert system that flashes warning lights and sounds alarms and trains enter and exit their yards, uh, similar type application. Uh, picture on the right is a telecommunications. This is a system for a, a telecommunications carrier using silos across the Midwest to mount radios for their wireless communication services. This is a picture of one of our UPSs mounted uh, on the silo providing backup protection. And that's actually, a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that's a, one of our SC7 enclosures with the 19-inch rack uh, integrated in that. In the security and surveillance market, the first example is a solar unit uh, deployed for uh, a city that powers a uh, radio for police and fire communications. Uh, they've deployed both our solar and our UPS systems to provide continuous reliable power for their citywide network. And we have these around the country from cities in Florida to Texas, out in California. This is one of our most common applications uh, for our systems being deployed. The second example is one of uh, several uh, units deployed uh, at Orlando uh, Executive Airport to provide perimeter security. Uh, they also have UPS systems at all of the gates to provide backup power to surveillance cameras, as well as access keypads and wireless communications. In the outdoor power market, Solar Energy targets the 1,000-watt load or less market, and, and 
essentially solar energy builds products uniquely suited to this 1,000 watt uh, or less outdoor market. Because of this, um, we focus only on the outdoor. We're not going to compete with the likes of an APC or trip light, which are focused on the indoor market. Uh, and on the larger systems, we're not uh, going to compete with the likes of like an Eaton Powerware or an Emerson, which focus on those much larger type systems. Um, in fact, our, our focus is recognized by the leading radio manufacturers who recommend our products uh, over some of our competitors out there. Um, we have about 16 radio and camera manufacturers that we are a technology partner with. Um, actually listed here are several radio manufacturers that we have configured solutions for. The ones in bold are manufacturers that we actually have a technology partnership with. Uh, Redline and Ruckus, um, there are a little asterisk next to them. Uh, they actually recommend our products, and we've done uh, several webinars and uh, uh, presentations with them. However, uh, we are not part of a formal uh, partnership program with them. Um, in fact, and the, the picture on the right is actually showing uh, one of our systems uh, in a perimeter security uh, application for one of the local utilities uh, here. Uh, perimeter security at the substation, as I mentioned earlier, is a uh, it's a very hot um, uh, type of ticket right now in, in the security uh, arena, especially after the, the shootings and then the break-in out at the Palo Alto uh, plant uh, like last year and then again a couple weeks ago. So um, there's, there's quite a bit of opportunity in that. Kind of a positioning on, on our products. Typically our products are positioned as a cost avoidance to trenching or pulling uh, uh, copper wire through existing uh, conduit. It also gives the advantage of placing cameras, uh, wireless communications, or SCADA type devices um, on the best location, not necessarily where existing power already exists. And also as a new opportunity, uh, uh, integrators, uh, typically avoid using light poles uh, to dif due to the difficulty connecting to 7x24 power. That's what our continuous power bridge is designed for, for powering a uh, device all day off a battery and then at night when the power comes back to the street light, recharging it. Um, so there's, there's several different options there uh, for availability. Current uses are in the, for our products are in the, the wireless uh, surveillance, smart grid, transportation, SCADA markets. You know, there are numerous uh, new opportunities out there, uh, you know, small cell and micro cell deployments, of course LTE and security. Um, there's uh, railroad bridges over navigable waterways are all being monitored now. Uh, <clears throat> power uh, transfer station perimeter security, as I've mentioned, RFID readers in the transportation industry. <clears throat> Essentially, if you have contacts in rail, water, power, oil and gas, uh, chemical, uh, these are all, all markets that are, are currently using our products. Where Solus is, is not used, our products are intended for outdoor, low power applications, so we're not, uh, our solar systems are not uh, uh, to be positioned as a grid tied type of solution. Um, we really target the 1,000 watt or less uh, market, the total load being 1,000 uh, watts or less. Some of our UPSs may be higher, especially in the telecommunications um, applications. Uh, but and one more point is these uh, sizes um, uh, tend to be uh, dependent on system location. Uh, i will show you kind of a quick and summary um, before we go into some of the questions. Um, power is a critical component in security, transportation, uh, industrial automation, uh, trans and telecommunications, of course. We are recognized as a key solution partner in the low wattage outdoor market. This is a very large and, and growing market that uh, we have an advantage that we have an opportunity to take advantage of. Um, in this final 
picture for those uh, of you that are, are in the car racing. Several of our solar generators are being used to power RFID readers along the tracks for the IMSA races, which includes the 12 hours of Sebring. So they will, uh, they're you know, powering RFID readers that are located inside the cars and the helmets of their, uh, of their, uh, the drivers so they can see how fast the cars are going and, and where they are at any point uh, in time. There was, cover a little of the questions that were, were sent in. Uh, there were several questions before I go into these about pricing, so I'm not going to really cover any of those here. So please contact your, your Alliance sales reps and they can help with you. Um, so what the first question we have is what information do you need to size a solar power plant? Uh, we have a quick and easy form that you can get from your, your uh, Alliance uh, sales reps. But the, in summary of what we'll, we need is we're going to need the location of where the system is going to be deployed, and then the voltage in watts or amps of each device that the system will be powering. Uh, we will then use data from NASA and uh, the National Renewable Energy Lab to determine the amount of sun hours available to determine the size of the panel array required, as well as the size of the battery bank uh, needed. Uh, for information, we actually derate our batteries to compensate for cold temperatures. Um, and then what we will do is we will give you a recommended solution uh, for each of your requirements. Our second question is what are the various battery types and how long will they last? For our solar power plants and our continuous power bridges, in most cases, we're going to recommend uh, gel cell batteries. Uh, in locations with very cold temperatures, we may recommend an AGM battery. Uh, as a short, uh, gel cell batteries uh, will provide approximately 3,000 deep cycles, whereas an AGM will provide about 500 uh, deep cycles, and by deep cycle we say to a 50% discharge. Uh, the AGM batteries will obtain more power in a very cold environment, such as uh, minus 20C to minus 40C. and, and Maybe a better fit in those environments, um, but otherwise we're going to recommend a gel. Uh, the batteries are typically going to last five to seven years uh, if we, because we'll, we'll size them properly. And of course, high heat environments or when systems uh, are undersized, it, it will shorten the life of the batteries to uh, closer to a five-year time frame. Robert. Um are all the active our, uh, RF are all the active electronic components that are built to your designs? Um, can you uh, address the temperature ratings of those items? I mean, I would imagine it doesn't look like there's any environmental control on any of your designs, which means these things can take a really wide swing of temperatures. That's correct. Our basic design is minus 20 to plus 60, and our actual uh, electronics. We actually design uh, our electronics from minus 40 to plus 85, and uh, we have the high temperature and um, uh, uh, ratings uh, are, are designed as well. If they need to go higher than that, uh, 75 to 85. Um, the long and short is we have a equipment rated for uh, temperatures or for locations anywhere in, in the world. Um, so we can cover the coldest cold and the and, and the, the highest heat. Um, and just in the example we actually have in Kuwait, several of our UPSs uh, they actually buried them a, a few few inches underground to keep the temperature uh, from getting up into that uh, uh, 85 to 90 C uh, range. So we also have an option for uh, in-ground type of systems as well. that answer the question? Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, what are, what are the, some of the design considerations? Uh, is, is the next question. And probably the most important uh, in the design consideration is try to select equipment with the same voltage. Each time the power is converted to a different voltage, uh, power is lost to heat. Uh, and if you do need multiple voltages, try to keep them all DC. The conversion to uh, AC system significantly or loses significantly more power than a DC to DC uh, conversion. 
and definitely try to avoid 24 volt AC when possible. Uh, that conversion to a 24 volt AC, uh, up to 40, you can get up to a 40 percent loss of power um, during that conversion process. Um, and the other is, is ease of installation. Uh, PoE is, is very easy to ins uh, to install and, and shortens the quick time uh, or the or the install time. Uh, it's also being at 48 volts, the equipment can actually be extended farther away from the system than a uh, the equipment can be if it was in a 12-volt uh, environment. The next question is, what are the typical mounting configurations? In our solar power plants, typically the systems are mounted uh, either on a pole or on the ground. Uh, poles are, are, are most commonly galvanized steel, Schedule 80 for up to two panels and Schedule 40 for up to uh, four panels. Uh, we recommend using either stainless steel U-bolts or, or a bandit to mount the enclosures uh, and, and panels to the pole. I would not recommend using pipe clamps except for on very, very small systems, uh, although there are people that, that, that do use those. And, and although it's not required, uh, most pole installations have our enclosures mounted to unistrut, and then the unistrut is fastened to the pole, um, although the, our, our enclosures can be directly mounted to the pole. Uh, next question, uh, can the systems be remotely monitored? Yes, we have our system monitor, which monitors the DC voltage of the system. Uh, it has an Ethernet output, and I will send information back via SNMP or email. Uh, usually, it's either sent across the, the existing uh, radio or fiber infrastructure already uh, at this site. The next question is, what are some applications for oil and gas? Oil and gas is, is, is a very large and growing uh, market right now. There are numerous applications for oil and gas, whether uh, it, it goes from uh, cathodic protection uh, to keep the uh, pipes from corroding to uh, SCADA and telemetry applications, uh, obstruction lighting power, uh, you know, remote communications, remote security, um, valve actuators. Um, it's, you know, power for VSAT. Um, they're also using it along the pipeline for leak detection. Uh, our systems are powering thermal cameras that are pointed to the pipeline, and then the thermal signature can show whether or not there's a leak along the pipeline. Uh, in fact, the same technique is being used to monitor performance of solar panels and solar farms, and we have um, our actually systems in place that are actually doing that. So we'll have the thermal camera looking at the uh, solar panels themselves to see if there's any issue um, in the you know anywhere in that solar farm because um, uh, if there's a, a short along the way they can quickly see that it's going to be either uh, hotter or colder than the, the rest of the, the solar farm would be. Those are the questions that I um, that were pre-sent in. Uh, are there some, any additional questions? Yeah, I have a few. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start backwards because uh, people were asking questions as you were speaking. So um, maybe okay. we'll answer the first one, the uh, last in, first out. <laughs> um, does the solution have uh, administration management, HTTP, SNMP, SMTP, uh, sorry? Yes. So um, with our, by, it's, a, it's an option to our systems. Um, we do have an SNMP monitor, our, called our remote monitor, and it's um, it can also, you can also do an HTTP connection um, if you're going to look at it. Uh, most installations will have it set up so that it will send an alert via email or a, uh, via SNMP um, uh, back to your operations center for that. So the short answer is yes. Okay, there's uh, another two questions from the same person. Uh, that I'll ask together. Uh, is it important to know, oops, another one came in. Is it important to know the exact power draw of the equipment you are what you need to power? Can a few watts make a difference in the overall pricing of the solution? Uh, yes, uh, it is It is important to know and, and every watt costs money. So if, um, 
our systems are typically designed for a location and with a specific power load to them. Um, and what that will give you is the, you know, the amount of, of power that can be generated um, from the solar panels as well as um, the amount of, of backup time uh, that the, the batteries uh, are available. And from a logical perspective, it, the solar panels charge the battery, and then the battery is what's powering your load. Um, in, in small systems, it, it, it's, very, it's very hard to uh, you know, have a watt or two change. So if you're talking about a, a powering a single radio that may be 8 watts, if you switch it to 10 watts, that's a significant difference. In a system that is designed for uh, 80 watts or 100 watts, and you're, you're switching it from 80 watts to 82 watts, there, we typically have enough uh, design uh, in there to, to cover that. But uh, it really should be designed for um, the actual amount of, of watts that are going to be drawn. OK, great. But if there are changes in the future that have to be made, <laughs> is it a forklift upgrade? Or is there modifications that could be made in the field to the existing install? Um, both. So okay. it, uh, right. we typically it's going to be a forklift, but if, if it was pre-designed for expansion, uh, then we have the ability to, um, to either add uh, additional batteries, although even when you change batteries, if they've been out in the field for um, you know, one to two years, you, you don't want to just add a, a new battery into that array or it's going to shorten the life of that, that other battery. Um, uh, and then um, the, the panels, um, and, and we've done this in the past, is if uh, we've put in, if they know they're going to grow the systems um, at a later date, they may size the, the battery array and just have the panel mount. So instead of having a single panel, they may have room for uh, to add an additional panel or third panel into that um, as well. Okay. So if you know you're going to have expansion within the next several years, it's probably smart to try to compensate for that up front uh, instead of right. on the back end because of the battery life, uh, the, the situation with the batteries, correct? That's correct. Right. Um, okay. One other option that uh, to follow up with that that we also have is we have the ability to add NICAD batteries. Um, and the advantage of a NICAD battery is that it can go uh, 10 to um, 20 years before you need maintenance, and the batteries themselves will last uh, up to 20 years. Um, in locations where it's extremely remote and the cost of a truck roll to do uh, any type of maintenance, uh, that is an option. Uh, the NICAD batteries are 10 to 15 times more expensive than a uh, traditional lead acid gel type of battery. Um, but the, if you're looking at, uh, at a remote site and comparing it to uh, truck rolls uh, every five years, then, then that is a, uh, an option. And some of the telecommunications carrier and the, and the, uh, the, the long-haul railroads do require those NICAD batteries. Right. OK, I, I have a few more questions here. Um, are there installation guides and spec sheets available as well? Can you review the lead times? Um, yes, they are available, and you can get those from the your Alliance sales rep. You can put a request of which ones you need. And depending on the system, it uh, is uh, de uh, depending on the, the uh, lead time. So if it's a, a, a most common systems are have very short lead times. Um, very large, complex uh, installations will have longer lead times. And you can, uh, we can provide that information through uh, your Alliance sales team. OK. Um, here's another question. Do you have solutions for 1,000 watts? Um, the short, uh, yes. Yes? OK. Um, Is it solar or UPS or all the above? So when it gets to 1,000 watts, it becomes, it, um, there, there's a, it's, a, it's a very large system, and um, there will be uh, engineering design required. 
Okay, um, here's another one. Hi there, I'm Alex. I want to know if the solution can be used with switches and access points, maybe a 450 watt consumption. Yes. Okay. I mean, that, that's typically what we're powering. Um, and uh, um, so, for example, in the, um, uh, with our SE7 enclosure, we've got, actually have a mounting for putting a, uh, it's, an, it's a rack mount switch in, in the system. Um, radio, it's, you know, so uh, depending on the size of the switch and the, um, the radio, uh, most rating, you know, is going to determine the size of the, the actual power, but um, 450 is actually a, a fairly large number for that uh, application, unless there's some other pieces and parts going to that. Okay. Um, how often do your solar power systems need to be maintained? Is once a year enough? And actually the question that just came in was kind of related. What are the ongoing costs associated with the solar solution? Um, so typically on a, one, once a year is plenty to review. It's mostly monitoring the make sure the connections are, are tight. The, uh, the U-bolts connect, putting the system to the pole uh, haven't loosened up. Uh, there is no, there should not be any corrosion on the uh, the battery terminals. Uh, and it, it's you know, in the first three years, it is mostly a visual inspection. Although when you're out there, you, should, you, know, you can double check on the, make sure everything is running properly. Uh, depending on the, uh, the the application of of where these systems are. Um, at, at the three to five year time frame is, is when you should be looking at replacing some of the batteries, uh, although they'll, they'll last from five to seven in, in most cases. Um, you, want, you want to make sure that the battery voltage is not going to be a, a problem because there is a, little, a, a lifespan of the batteries, and that's really what the, uh, most of the maintenance is going to be is in that time frame. Okay. Um... This is a question that came in first. Doesn't mean it's the most least important question, but um, just the timing. Um, could you describe the benefits of the solar solution against a power a propane solution? Uh, there's two. One, the ongoing cost of propane, uh, and the, and then the um, I'm assuming with the propane or um, that uh, there's also going to be the filter, the maintenance of that system uh, as well. We're not, there's going to be little to no maintenance in the first three to five years of a uh, of a solar power plant, and then in propane, there, there's going to be filters that need to be changed every. Typically, it's in a three-month or six-month time frame, plus the ongoing cost of propane gas. Somebody going out there and replacing that, uh, um, you know, refilling the tank unless it's directly connected into a, a pipeline. Okay, and then our last question, unless there's some more coming in. Uh, how is the street light, this is about the street light product, how is the street light connected to the power cord? I think that's related to the oh. power tap product. Okay, so the, on, on, the, on the top of most street lights, there is a, a photo cell or a shorting cap at the top of the, the light, and you'll see that, uh, especially on the Cobra heads, it's, it's very prominent. And it's it's a simple twist lock connector, so that that um, shorting cap on top of the or the photocell on top of that uh, light, you're just going to uh, twist it to remove it. Insert our light pole power tap, and then put the photocell in, into the uh, top of the um, uh, back onto the top of the LPT. In fact, I might be able to pop back to pictures, and it's. Uh, makes it easier to see. There's a male, there's essentially just a vampire tap. There's a, a, a male plug on the bottom and a female on the top. You're going to unscrew the, the uh, photo cell, put plug, you know, plug ours in, and then plug the photo cell back up on top of the... Um, I think it's important to note, Robert, as well, LPT. that if you if you do install a power tap, you, you are not going to modify the operation of the timers on the lamppost light. Okay? That is correct. So, Right. All right. That's so you know, right. you're not. If your customers are like, "Oh, you're probably," I, I'm not going to be able to turn these lights off now. No, you will. This is just a simple bypass to provide um, continual power power through the light tap, but will not 
interfere with the operation of the lamppost itself. That's correct. Right. Okay. I, I, uh, I think that might be the last question. There's some few questions about partnering and things, and uh, I just want to make sure everyone knows we'll follow up after the call. Um, we do have offices in Mexico and um, in the U.S. and Canada, so I'll have the appropriate sales rep follow up with you specifically. And just a couple of uh, yeah, just a couple of quick notes as well. I mean, if there's any um, if there's any uh, inquiries that need to be made uh, any earlier, you have our 800 number and our sales at alliancecom.com. Uh, email address. And just a couple of things that I wanted to mention in my travels. Uh, I'm the director of sales for the United States. I get out and I see a lot of customers. And one of the things we found is um, there's a lot of people out there who uh, actually put together their own kind of homemade, I wouldn't call them homemade, but they integrate their own solutions out there. They'll buy a variety of different parts from a variety of different manufacturers. And um, we've been able to actually convert a lot of these people over to Solus because of a couple of factors. Number one, first of all, we can provide everything in one nice, neat, little, warranted and, and guaranteed package, and we can give them one company, actually, to, uh, to use the support. And we can generally integrate a solution quicker than they can go out and buy all the parts on their own. And then there is sort of, sort of uniformity of quality amongst all the parts. And this, 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 hap, this hap has to do with people who make kind of homegrown NEMA solutions, but also people who are integrating solar solutions into a variety of different mobile cell on wheel units or other types of mobile surveillance units. I mean, nowadays we see a lot of uh, trailers out there that the police leave behind in certain hotspot areas um, to provide, you know, surveillance, uh, camera surveillance. This is a perfect application to be able to integrate a solar solution into um, devices like this. So if you're a systems integrator of these types of systems, or if you're just an integrator out there that are, that are building uh, cows or other temporary uh, communication um, uh, devices on wheel, uh, please give us a call because I think uh, it might, we might be able to make your life a lot easier by coming to you with an already integrated and warranted solution. Okay? So um, uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention was um, as a uh, distributor for Solus, um, Alliance will be stocking a variety of different products to meet uh, several different of the types of most used applications out there. On some of the uh, higher uh, wattage systems, we may have to, uh, uh, you know, we may have to bring those in on a lead time. Uh, but we are uh, we are going to be stocking products for your typical um, RF and security camera configurations. So you'll have fairly quick availability of the products. And again, just to kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, Solus is not just a solar company. As you notice, they, um, they manufacture a variety of other products, including the light pole taps, which come in very handy when you're working on security surveillance projects for municipalities and cities. And then they also have outdoor rated UPS systems that may not involve solar panels as well. Maybe you're just trying to provide remote outdoor UPS. So keep us in mind for all of these different types of applications. I want to thank everybody for coming on. Robert, if there's anything else you want to add before we wrap up, please do so. Uh, no, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And, and uh, you know, don't hesitate to, to you know, ask any additional questions and send in. And look, look forward to working with you all. Yes, and everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, thanks again for attending. I Just a few notes. I will be sending out an email follow-up uh, with a link to where you can watch the webinar again and again and again, and uh, also a copy of the PowerPoint. And uh, any questions that people asked after that we weren't able to address, we will follow up with you afterwards and answer them. And you can always reply to the email that I sent out, the invitation, uh, to if you forget. Uh, our number or anything like that just to contact us. So thank you again and look out for uh, a webinar probably in October. Have a great day.